logical connectives. So this is our start of chapter 10, which is a chapter all about proofs. So we're going to use this lesson to like talk about the intro of it. And the general idea is, what is the common language and common notation we use? So first, and now I would say honestly, usually the symbol for n is like this, like when you see when we do net notation, uh, set notation. So you see this or this, same thing with or. A lot of times you see the u with the or. Not, you see that. You have to see, sometimes you see like little prime. It means not that. If then, so we'll talk about what this means, but general, if then then we pull a little arrow sign, that means implication. This implies that. If and only if, it must go both ways, then put an arrow both lines on both sides. So I'll just put it like this, or so like this. With that information now, let's see if we could read the sentence, right? So here's an example. A and B imply C. That's all this means. So if you want to do mathematical language, right, we could just write A and B imply C. That's how I would write it. So that generally is like, okay, we understand what this means. If I see a little and symbol, a not symbol, the implication, so this, they're saying this guy implies this guy, so you can move on from there. Negation. So when we negate something, we do the opposite of what it is. If A is true, then not A is false, and vice versa. So right, you're just going to do the opposite. So to give an example here, the negation of today is Wednesday would be today is not Wednesday. We use negated. If we know that X is in, remember this means integers, that's what D means. Which is all the non, it's all, right, there are no decimals, so negative is and positive, but no decimals. The negation of x is an even integer is x is an odd integer. They're saying that because there's only two options. You could, you could also say x is not even. Helps if you spell it is correctly. Right, so you could say that, but since there's only two options, either even or you're odd, you could also say x is an odd integer. So both are true. This is a negation of that. Right, if you're not even, you must be odd. So you could say e x is not even, but that also means x is odd. If we know that x is in the real numbers, that's what the R stands for, real numbers. Well, now we can't say that. If I say x is even integer, what's the opposite of that? Well, you don't have to be odd, you can be a decimal. So you have to say x is not an even integer in that case. So it's a little like this word play. Implications. So we're going to... A lot of times in proofs, we're going to try to imply something, like trying like this implies this, this implies that. So we're going to use lots of implications. So we can see something like A implies B, because that's what this means, right? A is implying B. We call A the hypothesis. We're saying if this is true, then this happens, and B is called conclusion. And keep in mind, it only goes this direction, right? A implies B. We haven't said anything right now about B implying A or vice versa or other things. In English, there are many words that can use to show implication. I know when you do proofs, like in college or something, you use all of these. So you can say A implies B, A so B, A hence B, A thus B, A therefore B. Right? These are just some examples. Therefore, you can see the guy, the guy tells us, a lot of times you use the mathematics in these little three, tri three little circles. Also, it's answer therefore. I don't remember why. But these are all ways you go, okay, I'm trying to say this guy. I know this guy's true, so this guy must be true. So implication. The converse of an implication is when you switch it. So if you have A implies B, the converse, this is just definitions means B implies A. So you just switch it. And we'll see that now when you do that, not necessarily true, right? If we're saying A implies B, that is a true statement. This is sometimes true, sometimes not true. Let's look at a couple of examples. Write the converse, say whether the implication is true or false. If it is Saturday, then there is no school, right? So we have if Saturday, then no school, right? Our implication is Saturday, implies no school. So you can say if it's true or false. In general, I say this is a true statement for most high schools and stuff like that. And Saturday, no school. General, like, high school idea. Let's do the converse of it. So we're just going to switch these two things. No school implies Saturday. They want to know if that's true or false. Now, this is actually false. Just because you have no school does not mean it has to be Saturday. It could be Sunday. It could be holiday. So false, right? So that's why the converse is not always true. Sometimes it is, and then when it is, we had to say they only say But that's why it's good to check. So let's do some more examples. So for this one, for each statement, state it's negation. The tree is deciduous, which means that thing it's, it's losing leaves. It's like falling. So you can say the tree. I would say the tree is not.
And there we go. The probably a fancier word for that. I don't know it. But the tree is not deceivious, right? So it's not losing leaves right now. Stay with justification whether the statement is true or false. So you want to the statement is true. So x equals 3 if and only if x squared is equal to 9. Now, so it's an if and only if statement. So then we're saying this guy implies this guy and this guy implies this guy. So it's like saying the, the statement and its converse are both true. So let's go, let's go this way first, right? If x equals 3, then does that apply that x squared equals 9? Well, yeah. If I square both sides, that side is true. So if you do the converse, if you go backwards, if we start with x squared equals 9, and then we take the square root of both sides, I get x equals plus and minus 3. So this is not true. Right, when I go backwards, it could be a negative 3. So this side, the converse in this case, this like the earlier one, is not necessarily true. So this side was true, converse was not true. Say with justification whether each statement is true or false. X is positive if and only if the square root of x is a real number. Same as last time, we have an if and only if statement, so we're trying to say x is positive implies square root of x is in the reals, and then we're also going to go backwards. Square root of x being in the reals, does that imply that x is positive? So this first one is true. If x is positive, then square root, I'm going to look at that, x pos does imply the square root of x is in the real numbers. I give you a positive number, I take the square root of it, it's also going to be the real numbers. Sounds cool. Let's go backwards. Does the fact that the square root of x is in the reals imply that x is positive? So we can't take a square root of a negative number, so we're not counting those. So we're only talking about numbers from like 0 to infinity. The only thing we're really looking at, we need it to be, we need it to be positive. And you're like, oh, look, oh, that's positive, except for 0. 0 is considered neutral, not positive or negative. So this is actually false. We haven't talked about this yet, but we have, a lot of times we do like when something is false, you want to give a counterexample of the reason why it's false. I want to give a counterexample of this, a reason why this is not true. I would just say zero is the element of the reals, but zero is not positive. So that's why this one's false. So it's not if and only if in this one. Okay, last one. Determine whether A and B are equivalent. So that means that they're equal, like they're equal to like if and only if kind of thing. A is even. Sorry, x is even, x squared is even. So we're trying to say this if x squared is even, does that imply that x squared is even? And does vice versa happen? Does x squared even imply x is even? So eventually we'll be able to prove this, but we're not there yet. So if you start thinking about logically, does that does that follow? If I do like two squared, I get four even. Uh, Ten squared is a hundred, right? Twelve squared two one forty four. <laughs> do math sometimes. Six squared thirty six, right? It seems to follow that this is true. How about when we go backwards though? Is this true? Now again, we're gonna actually this this one. I'll tell you right now. This one the first first way is true. We'll prove it later in a later lesson. How about I go backwards? What if it, what if the x squared is even? Does that make x even. So I think might, might go backwards like early 36, square root of that is 6, those are both even. Right, square root of 4 is 2, they're both even, sounds like it's good. But what if I do like square root of 6? That's a decimal, that's like 2 point something. That's not an even number, that's not even, a, it's, it's like a decimal. So this one's actually not true. So again, we have not equivalence. Because sometimes when you take the square root of even numbers, you do you get a non-even number. You get a rational number. Anyway, that's this lesson.